Good morning. I'm Sean Bennis. I am the coordinator of our family caregiver program here at Henry Ford Health System. And joining me today is Mary Musgrove. She is a pharmacist who is studying in the infectious disease department at Henry Ford Hospital. So welcome, Mary. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm good. So today, Mary will be talking about hepatitis A. She's going to tell us why it's important, what we need to know, and how we can prevent it, and maybe some other tips that um, caregivers really need to pay attention to. So Mary, please tell us about hepatitis A and why we should care. Thank you for having me. So currently, Southeast Michigan is having an outbreak of hepatitis A. We've seen about 770 cases and actually 28 deaths due to the virus since February 28th. Hepatitis A is a virus that can damage your liver um, and actually cause liver failure um, if it gets significant enough. Um, there are some high-risk groups, so patients who are incarcerated, homeless, or patients that use illegal drugs, both injectable and non-injectable, uh, men who have sex with men, uh, patients who are going to travel to an intermediate or high-risk area, which you can find out at the CDC, and then also any caregiver of patients that um, could have hepatitis A. Okay, so how exactly is hepatitis A transmitted? Like, how do I get it? So if I don't use illegal drugs with a needle or I'm not going to travel to another country, like, how else would I be able to get the virus? Hepatitis A is unique from the other hepatitis viruses because it's transmitted by the fecal oral route. And what that means is a patient that actually has hepatitis A um, that is shedding it when they use the restroom, any person that comes in contact with a surface that that patient has touched can then become infected with the virus. So what you're saying is like by poop? Yes, exactly, oh. exactly. <laughs> okay, so we have to wash our hands. Yes. Okay, so we should wash our hands every time we go to the bathroom, right? And then like when we're leaving, the bathroom maybe like use our sweater to open up the door handle because you don't know what the person before you did that's very true and then before we eat exactly so like having hand sanitizer or something on your purse or or on you know like in your pocket so that you can use that before you eat because yes. those would be ways to prevent it mm -hmm. but then there's also a vaccine there is okay so unfortunately hepatitis a has no therapy it's only supportive care so we can't give you a drug and cure you from hepatitis a but what we can do is prevent you from getting hepatitis a okay. so there is a vaccine um, and it's in two doses about six months apart um, and that can help prevent hepatitis a okay so I know that there's a lot of talk about vaccines and, and, and people have a lot of controversy around them, um, but can the hepatitis A vaccine give me hepatitis? No, it cannot. So the hepatitis A virus is an, or the hepatitis A vaccine is an inactivated virus um, that you get that your body mounts a response to. So you cannot get hepatitis A from the okay. vaccine. And why don't we want hepatitis A? I know you mentioned the liver before, mm -hmm. but I mean, can't we live without our liver or, or I mean, grow another one or I mean, why is that important? Can it kill us? It can definitely kill you. So okay. um, some of the signs and symptoms of having the virus um, don't happen when you actually get it. It happens when your uh, liver becomes damaged. So you can have yellowing of skin, yellowing of eyes, um, and then once your liver becomes uh, damaged enough, um, it can actually kill you. Okay, so this is pretty serious. So as funny as we're making it about, you know, washing your hands and, and how you can get it, it's very important that we get vaccinated. So healthcare workers especially, I mean, the hospital is just full of, of lots of different diseases, exactly. right? Exactly. And so we come in contact with tons of different body fluids and, and all that kind of stuff just because of the nature of our job. So as a healthcare worker, we should be getting vaccinated. All of those other high risk groups should also be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And then if you're going out to eat, you're going to a restaurant, mm -hmm. I'm just picturing that, you know, maybe, maybe that, that we could get it there. You can, right? so there have been some, uh, in different counties, outbreaks associated with certain restaurants. Um, so even going out to a restaurant, you could be, if they don't cook their food well enough, or if you came in contact to it with an employee that had it, you could um, become infected with the virus that way too. Okay, so where can we get more information? Um, I believe you, we, you mentioned a website here. Mm -hmm. Um, so michigan.gov forward slash mdhhs. Yes. So we are just going to zoom in on the sign here. Okay. 
Okay, great. So we will put this information in the comments section of the, um, you know, of the Facebook Live. Um, I guess there is a question that has come in. So Susan, can you um, tell me the question? There's two questions. Great. Sue asked, will my doctor's office have the vaccine? Okay, so will the doctor's office have the vaccine? Uh, most doctor's office should have the vaccine. I would definitely call them before you go to show up for, to get the vaccine. There are also several other places that you could get the vaccine um, by calling your local pharmacy to see if they are able to give the vaccine. Um, if you're uninsured, you can actually come to Henry Ford's uh, emergency department and they will give you the vaccine for free. Um, or you can go to a primary care uh, clinic. Wonderful. And then another question? Angela would like to know, can I get the vaccine while I'm pregnant? Um, so I would call your provider to make sure um, that, that that's appropriate. The CDC for those high risk groups does recommend that you can still get the vaccine. Um, and even children, um, as part of their normal immunization schedules, get the hepatitis A vaccine. Okay, great. So if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us either in the comment section or on our website our email address or our phone number. You can always reach out and ask us questions. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, Sue and Angela, for your questions. And if anybody else has them, feel free to reach out. Then we can get in touch with Mary um, for additional information. So thank you so much, Mary, for coming and sharing your knowledge. I mean, the, this, is, this is really important information um, for all of us to know, not just caregivers, but for the general public. So please share this information with others. Thanks so much for joining.